I'm showing you a picture of the back of my machine. I have my spool holder here, you can see, and I made a cake out of my yarn with a yarn winder. And then I just put that on the spool holder and then the yarn goes up through here and it goes right over here to the back of my sewing machine, actually to the top I have a one inch piece of a Starbucks straw, one of those big long fat straws. And uh, I have that taped with masking tape to the top of my machine. The yarn goes through and then it goes down the front and into my um, presser foot. You can see the straw here from the front. The yarn is coming from my spool holder down and comes all the way down. Now, an important thing, the foot that I like to use for couching is the number 21 foot. It's called the cording foot, I believe, and it's got a nice little groove there for the yarn. It's got two holes. So if you look closely, there's a hole right here, right there, nice and wide for your zigzag stitch. And then there's another hole here where the yarn goes through. So you're going to feed your yarn down into this hole. You've got to encourage it a little with a little tiny scissors or something. There we go. So we got the yarn going through. And then when I put the foot on, I'm going to start with this petal right here. Okay. And when I put my needle down and my needle up and then lift the foot, instead of pulling the thread up here, I'm going to pull everything. If you go to the side, you can see where the thread came up. Okay, and then pull your bobbin thread up and then you'll have both your top thread and your bobbin thread. I have Deco Bob here uh, from Wonderfill in the bottom and I have the Super Twist in the top. So not only are you going to hold those two pieces of thread, you are also going to hold your yarn. Okay, and then put your presser foot down. Your feed dogs are down. You're going to stitch with a straight stitch right in place to anchor everything. About three stitches. Then go to your zigzag. In this case I'm going to do maybe 440 and for the stitch length and 470 for the stitch width. Okay, just, just to keep it a little bit more moderate. Stitch zigzag in place just for a little bit and then raise your feed dogs and you can get going and you're stitching right along the edge to cover up the edge of that fabric. Okay, when you get to the point, lower your feed dogs again, zigzag in place, and then end with your needle on the left side. Then you're going to pivot and it's too far out. Like if I would come down now, I would be off of the pedal. So lift up your, um, your needle and reposition yourself so that you're right on that edge. And your feed dogs are still down. You are going to stitch a zigzag in place and then raise your feed dogs and you can keep going. All right, so I stitched in place again at the very end right there after I turned the corner. Um, I did the zigzag with the feed dogs down and then went to straight stitch and stitched in place just to anchor it and then I trimmed off the, um, the yarn, okay? And one thing that's real important is to use Freychak. Okay, this is so old, but it's by Dritz. It's Freychak. Um, it is some kind of uh, 
substance that will anchor your stitches. So you don't want anything to fray. So you just go ahead and stick some of this on both ends. Then the yarn will not fray. Okay, and it'll dry really fast. It's called Fray Tech. F-R-A-Y Tech. All right, and so we're going to pick this different orange color over here for the next color. And uh, let me get that ready and I'll show you how we do that. I have my yarn fed through the front hole and I'm holding on to my orange super twist thread. I lower my, wait, let me get this back here. I have the yarn facing the back and I'm going to lower my needle right on the edge there. Okay, so lower your needle bring your quilt over to the side a little bit so you can see where you came up grab your scissors and pull your top thread down through your uh, presser foot so you've got your bottom thread your so you're holding on to all three you've got your stitches going straight stitch your feed dogs down three stitches in place, go to your zigzag stitch, a few stitches in place there, and then raise your feed dogs and you can go. Okay, now I wanna just make sure we're going to come right past this um, spot here and come right down to this petal. That's our goal. And probably go one more. Lower the feed dogs. Do a few stitches in place. Straight stitch few stitches right in the same hole and then take it out okay and then pull on these so they don't pull on them a little bit before you cut them clip that go on the underside make sure you clip your bobbin threads and then grab your fray check and Put a little fray check at the start and at the stop at the end. Put that fray check on. You can trim this up a little bit more later. Okay, once it's dry. All right, and then we're gonna switch to a little darker color to do this petal. One more time. I'm figuring if I do it a couple of times, you will get more comfortable with it. So stitch needle down, come up, move it over to the side, pull your threads up so you have all two threads and the yarn in your hand and hold on to everything. Do a couple stitches in place, do a couple zigzag stitches in place and then get going. So, you know, you're just gonna do a few stitches at a time. And do you see how this really defines the edges of your petals? Now, this is a very sharp curve and I don't really wanna do such a sharp curve, so I'm gonna lower the feed dogs and do a couple stitches in place there then turn it again a couple stitches in place do a couple stitches down and then do my pivot it's just going to blunt that pivot a little bit because it's really really sharp it's never going to come out looking right if you backtrack you know if you have that sharp of a curve okay so let's see how that looks. Mm 
Okay, it's a little busy right there, but I think it'll be fine. Now I'm gonna trim these up here a little bit, get them out of the way. All right. Okay, and that's the end of it right there. So I need to lower the feed dogs, go to the straight stitch, and then lift everything up. So you can see how it's defining everything. Okay, we have a lot of zigzaggy stuff going on right there, but I think it's okay. But still, this, you want to kind of nudge these little the yarn to go down a little bit here because it's need, it needs to cover up the, um, the edge of the fabric. Okay, and just give it a little encouragement by putting some of this on there. Just kind of make it stay where it's supposed to stay. All right, and this was our start and stop. So put a lot of fray check on there. Now, um, I do need to go back and do this orange here. I forgot to do that orange. And because that's going behind, I, I want to do that first and then do this last. Now, we're doing our very last uh, petal here, the darkest one. So you can see how that really defines the petals of the poppy. Now, of course, we're going to do the stamens here. We're going to do a lot more um, thread sketching and adding color in here to give it dimension. But you can see how those poppies are starting to get very much more defined. And I'm going to finish these others over here, and then I will show you another technique. So I finished all the couching on my poppies. And this is how they look. So they are very well defined. This is a small quilt. And so, um, you know, this, the, this yarn looks kind of fat on these little petals. Um, if you had a larger applique, it would probably look a little better. But I don't think it looks too bad. And um, you have these little buds and they were satin stitched. Now you have a choice. You can satin stitch around all these larger leaves. It would be a really refined look if you did that. What I'm going to do is take this to the long arm and start doing some thread painting because I'm a little more comfortable on the long arm. You can easily do it on the small machine as well, but I will show you how to do that. I took all the basting stitches out. And so this is how it looks on the back. You just have this little area here where the petals were. And what you can do is just cut. I wouldn't tear because you might rip these stitches out. So in this, you know, if it was all satin stitched, then you could tear. Like around there, that would easily tear. But here, I would use a scissors and just be careful that you're not cutting through your, your fabric, okay? And so just cut those places out and just go around all that and get rid of this stiffness. And then we'll make our quilt sandwich and go to the long arm and I will show you how to do some thread painting. So here's my quilt with the poppies couched. And you're gonna notice that it is no longer a square quilt. I discovered that I had put my poppies, fused them all on, and it was, I didn't realize it, but it was all over to this side a little too much. So I trimmed some off of this side. So it's a rectangular quilt and that's fine. At this stage, before we make our quilt sandwich, uh, I want to square it up. Uh, the way that you square up a quilt, this quilt has some, uh, stabilizer on the back which makes those spots a little bit stiff but you can still square it up and at this stage what you want to do is just make sure that it's lined up with your grid here and like over here you can see that I didn't trim it exactly 
straight. So you just want to trim, make sure it's very square, okay? And then um, you can do it the other way too if you want to be really perfect. You're going to do this step again after it's all quilted. It's kind of hard with all the stiffness, but there you go, okay? And that's pretty good, so I'm not going to do anything with that. The next thing you need to do is tr um, cut a piece of batting that is big enough to cover that. Okay, I use uh, Quilter's Dream batting. I use Poly Select and Poly Request depending on how thick I want it. All right, so that's going to fit. And you need your backing. So this is what I'm using for my backing, and I also need to square this up. So the way I square up backing, and I am going to do the rest of this quilt on the long arm. So you notice that my piece is a little longer than it would need to be if I was just doing it on the domestic machine. So I line up this folded bottom edge, and then I make sure my side is straight. Make sure my other side is straight. You can see which it is not. So then you're going to trim this side, and then also trim the top. Um, come down a little more. Trim that up. Okay, now if this was a really big piece of backing, you were doing a much larger quilt, what you would do is fold this side over and then line this edge up with your grid and this edge. So this edge here all lined up and this edge down here and then trim and trim. Okay, so that's how you square up your quilt. I'm going to go load this on the long arm and show you how I do the rest of the quilting. So I basted around the edge of this quilt. This is a tiny quilt, so I'm not doing any basting across the center as you would if you had a large quilt. Now I am stitching with monofilament thread. I'm using, on my long arm, I use a Madeira Monolon, it's called. It comes on a very large spool. And I'm using that to stitch around the edge of each petal uh, just to anchor these three flowers. I'm not gonna do it around all the other ones because again, it's such a tiny quilt, it really doesn't matter. So um, I'll let you watch me do some of this. I have my one arm handle of the long arm lifted up so that you can see what's going on here. I wanted to make that little black uh, seed pod that's in the middle of the poppy and so I cut a little piece of black fabric out and I'm just going to plop it right down there and I'm going to do a little stitching on it and create a little seed pod. I for some reason when I moved didn't grab my black thread from where all my stuff was stored so I have something close to black thread and I think it'll work. Let me just stitch it down. Okay, I've got it stitched down. So I'm just gonna do some little stitches. And then um, I'm putting all those little um, hairy stitches that stick out from that. Okay, so um, I'm happy with how that looks. 
and uh, I'm not going to do that on the other ones because they are not um, you're not looking into the center of them quite as much okay so I'm just going to do some stitches out here with uh, the orange thread to kind of create some shading in here And then I'm going to use a little yellow up here because the sun is really shining on this petal and making this a bright yellow up here. If you're wondering what all these scribbles are over here, this is where I check my tension. I um, do little tiny circles when I put each new color of thread in and change my bobbin because I have to check the bottom side and see if the tension is right. Um, every time you change a color, it could make it make the tension be off so every thread change you have to check your tension and just make sure it's right and i forgot to mention that i am using glide thread it says fill tech f-i-l dash t-e-c fill tech glide thread it's a trilobial polyester it's really shiny and um like the gold military gold is one of my workhorses i i use it all the time uh, it's very shiny it looks almost metallic and this is a really nice quilting thread um, it's a good weight and I use it in my long arm all the time I do use it in my domestic machine as well um, okay but I have my yellow loaded in here now So that's enough shading in there. I don't want to do so much thread painting that I cover up the fabric. I'm not that kind of a thread, thread painter. Uh, it, it, it's beautiful the way other people do it, but I just really don't like to do it that much. All right, now I'm going to do this light uh, little petal right here. Okay, my uh, thread did not really match this petal color. I don't have a thread uh, that matches it real well. So um, I just kind of did an all over little, what you're doing is just kind of scribbling and just trying to create additional color there. I want to show you, um, I did this one a little differently. I just did only some of that orange down in the bottom and just some little spikes going out. Let me do it over here so you can watch and I need to move you so I don't bump into you. I hope you can see that okay. Okay, so um, let me just move my needle out of the way. There you go. So you can see that I'm doing a, a lot of dense stitching down in this little V shape here and then just doing occasional spikes out. I really like that. Um, it looks a little better for, I, this is a nice color of petal and I didn't want to cover it all up. So that's another way that you can do your thread painting and it looks really good. Okay, now on these petals here, they're coming up from the center and so you want your stitches to kind of go up that way. So that gives it enough shading. I think that you're fine there. Um, it give, makes it look like it's curved. The petal looks curved. So that's how you do your shading on your petals. And it's very easy to do that on your domestic machine as well. The first thing I'm gonna do is just kind of scribble along the edge of these. Just really do some definition on the edge.
So you can see there that sometimes my stitches went slightly out beyond the edge of the fabric and that's okay. You just fill it in and that way the, it makes this leaf really pop. Now all you have to do is make your spine of the leaf down the center and then your little veins that go out to these other little parts. And there you go, your first leaf is done. I just wanted to show you that um, on this one, all I'm gonna do is stitch around, straight stitch right around the edge of it. I'm not gonna do any shading or add anything to it at all. Okay, so my stems are a little bit lighter color and they tend, uh, some of them to go toward the yellow, so I have a little different color of thread. Um, and I'm just basically going to do those the same way. We're just going to shade along the edges of them just to get them defined. All right, I've got everything. Um, the stems all stitched down and I wish I had a better color to go with those stems. They look a little dark, but we might be able to change that with something else. Um, I'm going to do this top part. I do have a light thread to match that. So I'm going to do just kind of an Asian uh, water design up there. So let me show you how I do that. Okay, so um, I'll have to come back and start over again to get this part over here. But one thing I wanted to explain is that your openings, when you go back and forth, your openings cannot stack on top of each other. So you notice that I have an opening here and here and here, but I chose to have the ones below them staggered so that some are over to the side not directly below each other because that will create a little tunnel and the fabric will pop up. So you can see that this is making the stitches, uh, it's making the fabric lay down nicely and where you don't have any quilting it's kind of popping up but the quilting will take care of that. So I finished all this watermark kind of quilting I did up above and then down here, since it's darker, I would like to change the type of quilting to more of something that looks maybe like foliage of some kind. So I'm just going to freehand it. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do it, um, but it's going to be a sort of organic and uh, let's give it a try. So here is the quilt all finished and there's couching around the petals. There's thread painting along the stems and the leaves and we have satin stitching around these little buds. Okay, so you can see that I did the watermark design for the top part of the quilting. And then I just did kind of a foliage shape, random organic kind of um, design over here. Okay, so I am going to now cut it and face it. So I did not do bindings, traditional bindings on my quilts. I just do facings and so the facings are like a like the facing on your pants or your skirt and it leaves a nice clean finish on your art quilt 
also, let me get this squared up. This is where the squaring up is really, really important. And you can save these pieces of leftover fabric that you have around the edge. Of course, this is where I checked my tension, so I gotta cut that off, throw that away. That's not useful to anyone. Um, but these pieces here can be used for the facing. Okay, so I would just cut off some of this. Whoops. And I think the rest of this we can use for the facing and then for the, um, for the hanging sleeve. So first what we have to do is make sure that it is squared off. Now, I know I said this is a rectangle because I sliced part of the side off. But squaring off means that all your angles are 90 degree angles. And it looks to me like we're pretty close. Right here, I need to just shave a little tiny bit off right there. And the rest is good. Okay, so I'm going to make facing um, strips out of this. And uh, instead of showing you on this quilt how to do a facing, I am going to refer you to my website, artfulquiltingandsewing.com, and go there and if you look at the menu, there is a header that has free videos. So on the free videos, there is how to do a facing. And you can watch that and then you can face your quilt and it will be done. All right, I hope you enjoyed that video and we'll see you again soon.